good. Yay. It sure is lonely out here. Hmm, I wonder what the other planets have been up to lately. <gasps> I should go visit them. Hi, Mercury. Oh, hey, Earth. Long time no see. I was about to go on a run. Want to race around the sun? <laughs> Let's go. <gasps> Gotta go faster. Gotta go faster. Wow, you're fast. You ran four laps in the time I did one. Thanks. I'm little, but I'm the speediest planet in the whole solar system. <laughs> Mercury zooms around the sun every 88 days. Hi, Earth. Do you mind if I borrow your moon to shoot hoops? I don't have one. No problem, Venus. I'll come play with you. <laughs> Look out! Here I come! <laughs> All right! She shoots, she scores! Whoa, swoosh! <laughs> good game, good game. Oof, you didn't miss a shot. <laughs> You're on fire, Venus. Well, I am the hottest planet in the solar system. <laughs> the surface temperature of Venus can reach 880 degrees Fahrenheit. <gasps> oh, how's it going, Mars? Dude! <laughs> Come surf the asteroid belt with me. Look at me. Hey, Jen! <laughs> he made it through. Whoa. All that surfing turned up some of your rusty red dust. Right, yes! Hey, that's why they call me the Red Planet. I'm the reddest and raddest around, bro Chacho. <laughs> Mars gets its color from an abundance of iron oxide, commonly known as rust. Jupiter! What's up, big guy? Not too much. Um, I did pick up a new hobby. Nice. Hmm, uh, basketball? Weightlifting? <laughs> no. Jupiter dance. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh -huh. I didn't know the biggest planet in the solar system was so graceful. <laughs> Thanks. I may be large, but I'm light on my feet. <laughs> Jupiter is mainly made up of gases, such as hydrogen and helium. Uh, hi, Saturn. Um, your rings look extra sparkly today. 
Y'all are too sweet. <laughs> I added some shiny ice chunks to the rocky bits and space dust. <laughs> Come hula hoop with me. <laughs> She's the most amazing planet in the universe. Galileo first spotted Saturn's rings in 1610. How? What the? Your hula hooping skills are electrifying. Are you trying to look cooler than me? N no way, Uranus. Everyone knows you're the coolest planet around. That's a fact. Sorry for the frosty greeting, kid. Uranus has the coldest recorded temperature of any planet at negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. What are you doing way out here, Neptune? I like how quiet and beautiful it is. Ooh, look how those comets light up the sky. Beyond Neptune, the Kuiper Belt is a source of comets. It's the best view in the solar system. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Wow, the other planets are so special. I'm not the fastest, the biggest, or the coolest. Huh. I must be the most boring planet in the solar system. We have something for you, Tiny Blue Marble. For me? Surprise! <laughs> Your air is the freshest. Me? You're covered in flowing water. Yeah? And most importantly... Hmm? You're full of life! in the whole solar system. The end. An autumn pop-up book. A leaf seems simple, but leaves do many things. A leaf contains green chlorophyll that helps it use sunlight, water, and air to make food for the plant.
as days shorten, autumn's brilliance flutters down. With less daylight, chlorophyll disappears from leaves and bright colors show. As leaves drop, some birds migrate to warmer places. Hungry critters hide under the layers. The hedgehog curls up in a prickly ball to sleep, its spine sticking out for protection. Wet, matted leaves are homes for frogs, insects, snails, and slugs. Leaves rustle as animals hustle for food. Chipmunks scurry among leaves and stuff their chubby cheeks with seeds. Squirrels bury acorns and nuts under leaves to store for winter feeding. Mushrooms pop up on the forest floor. Mushrooms often grow in damp, leaf-covered locations. Deer eat mushrooms, including some kinds that are poisonous to humans. Leaf-lined burrows are cozy for dozing. In autumn, some animals, such as bears, skunks, chipmunks, mice, frogs, and snakes, prepare for deep winter sleep. Leaves change. They are so amazing. Julia wakes up to a beautiful sunrise. She beams. Today is the perfect day to hike up to Pancake Peak. The air is fresh. Julia is prepared. And she is traveling by herself, just the way she likes it. Grumble, grumble. Be home in time for dinner. <laughs> Julia buzzes through the wildflowers of Muffin Meadow. Lunks through the darkest depths of Black Coffee Cave. And she balances bravely across Bacon Bridge.
Julia crests Hash Brown Hill in record time. She has a quick picnic for one. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It's just a little farther until she reaches the turnaround at Pancake Peak. Panorama at Pancake Peak is perfectly peaceful. She has it all to herself, just the way she. Eep! A band of bickering creatures disturbs the silence and the view. They notice Julia. cries the tiny pack rat. This nice girl can help us get down. What? Where is a girl? Asks the javelina, squinting and fiddling with his broken glasses. A stranger? Eep! Cries the frightened porcupine. Julia backs away. Oh, I think there's been a misunderstanding. You see, I need to be home in time for dinner, and... My name's Fitz! Interrupts the pack rat. This blind bloke is Lewis, and that lovely bundle of quills is Violet. Stranded, squeaks Violet. Getting to the peak was fine, but when I saw how high we were, I poofed. Which broke my glasses, grumbles Lewis. I can't see a thing. And popped the cargo balloon I was using to lighten my load. Groans fits. Now my pack is too heavy for me to carry. So, what do you say? Can we tag along? Pleads the helpless trio. This is not the way Julia likes it. But once they safely return to the base of Pancake Peak, the relieved tagalongs squeal with glee. Julia, you rule ya! They break for a sunny group picnic at Hash Brown Hill. Grumble, grumble, grumble. As Fitz opens his backpack, Julia exclaims, Whoa, a rat's pack is where the snacks are at. After they gobble some of the load, Fitz can carry the pack himself. He shouts, Onward to Bacon Bridge! But Bacon Bridge is broken. We're doomed, frets Violet. Don't worry, says Fitz. What kind of pack rat would I be without a pack rat? <laughs> you save the day, Fitz. Everyone cheers. We 
should keep moving. Worries, Violet. Black Coffee Cave is getting darker by the minute. Oh no! Julia gasps at the mouth of the cave. I've lost my headlamp. My flashlight is gone too! Fitz cries. Follow me, grumbles Lewis. I can't see, but I have an exquisite nose. Do I smell wildflowers at the other end of this cave? That's Muffin Meadow, exclaims Julia. Come on, everyone. Lewis can get us through this. Shouts. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! <laughs> Wait, what happened to Muffin Meadow? Whispers Julia. Fits. Nobody's gonna chop my friends. Violet roars. Righteous defense, Violet. If it hadn't been for you, we'd all be plant food exclaims Julia. Speaking of food, do you smell that? asks Lewis. It smells like spaghetti and pizza, says Violet. Exclaims Fitz. It's dinner at my house, says Julia, and we are right on time. As the tagalongs sit down to dinner, Julia hears a knock at the gate. Knock, knock, knock. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Tonight, Julia is feasting with all her new friends just the way she likes it.
When water heats up, it turns into warm, wet air called vapor. Vapor rises into the sky where it becomes cold and turns into a cloud. The cloud becomes bigger until it is so heavy that parts of it fall to the ground. What falls? Raindrops. Kitty will find a place that's dry. Let's look for Kitty. Want to try? Do cats like rain? No. Water makes a cat's fur feel very heavy. Cat's ears cannot keep water out, and they don't like the way it smells. For Kitty, it's rain, rain, go, go away. away. <laughs> Raindrops are falling on Mama Duck. She likes the wet and mushy muck. Do ducks like rain? When ducks comb their feathers with their bills, they leave a layer of oil on top. The oil makes water slide off. It keeps the feathers that are closest to the duck's body dry and warm. In a lake or in the rain, ducks are waterproof. Rain won't scare a squirrel away. He stays busy on a rainy day. Do squirrels like rain? If it is not raining too hard, a squirrel will curl its tail over its head to make a built-in umbrella. In heavy rains, squirrels stay in their nests to keep dry. Brown beetle's shell is shiny and hard. He doesn't mind a rainy yard. Do beetles like rain? A beetle has a hard, shell-like covering that prevents it from getting soaked. Worms are squirmy on wet ground. They squirm and wiggle all around. Do worms like rain? Yes. Earthworms mostly live and travel underground because they need moisture all the time. After it rains, you will see worms because it is wet enough for them. They can wriggle along much faster above ground. leaves to butterflies rest. Keeping wings dry is what's best. Do butterflies like rain? Rain makes butterflies too cold to fly. They hide out in protected spots called roosts until the storm passes. When the sun comes out, so do the butterflies. out from a hole in a tree. He says, look, no rain on me. Do birds like rain? Some do, some don't. Most small birds tuck themselves away in nests or the inner branches of a tree or bush or under anything that will keep the rain off. After a rainstorm passes, you can go outside and listen for all the birdie chirps. <gasps> mommy! Mommy! Look at that! 
I think I spy my kitty cat. Clouds are gone. The sun is high. Here's my kitty. Warm and dry. <laughs> Where did Kitty go? Where does Kitty go in the rain? A botanical pop-up book. Every flower begins as a bud. Their blooms produce seeds which root into sprouts. Spring brings rain and warmer weather, which encourages plants to produce flowers. While all flowers share the same humble beginnings, they come in a stunning range of brilliant hues and exceptional shapes. Annual plants have bright, showy blossoms that last a single season. Perennial plants survive many years and tend to have smaller flowers. Many peony and poppy flowers open in sunlight, closing at night and on cloudy days. Jasmine flowers release their fragrance after the sun sets to attract nighttime pollinators. Some flowers have special colors and scents to attract bees for pollination. Bees turn nectar into honey to feed the colony. Many species of bees are endangered due to climate change, habitat loss, disease, and pesticides. Sweet floral nectar feeds tiny animals and insects. In return, they share their dusty gifts of pollen with other plants. Hummingbirds can drink up to two times their body weight in nectar a day. When butterflies land on flowers, pollen is transferred to and from their legs. More than 300 species of fruit depend on bats for pollination. Flowers produce fruits and seeds after pollination. Critters deposit fruit seeds in new areas through their droppings. Some seeds are airy enough to flit in the wind. Others are carefully armored for years. Every fruit starts as a flower, but not every flower produces fruit. 
While some flowers grow on land, others flourish in water. Aquatic plants nurture wildlife by filtering water, creating oxygen, and providing shelter. Plants that grow in water often have flexible stems that either float freely or reach into the soil below. Life is enriched by flowers in many ways. With purpose and beauty, they help nature survive and thrive. Jack built. This is the bee box, made of painted wood that stands in the shade of the yard. are the honeybees that live in the special box that stands in the yard. These are the flowers that feed the honeybees that fly in and out of the hive in a box. This is the sweet nectar that feeds the queen and the other bees that live in the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the golden honey made by the thousands of busy bees that work inside the dark shelter that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who keeps bees as a hobby, gathering honey from the bee box that stands in the yard. This is the honey pot filled with fresh honey produced by the worker bees that live in the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy who drinks tea with honey while her children snack on bread and sweet, gooey honey. This is the honeycomb made by the worker bees that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who likes to eat raw honey and comb with slices of tart green apple. Delicious. This is the beeswax made into candles that are scented with honey that is collected from the hive that stands in the yard. And this is the mommy 
who lights the candles, then says a prayer of thanks. This is the cough syrup made with golden honey that comes from the hive in a box that stands in the yard. And this is Jack, the daddy, who spoons the medicine so his child will sleep better. This is the yogurt mixed with honey that comes from the bee box that stands in the yard. <laughs> and this is the grandma who offers her grandchildren sweet honey yogurt for breakfast. Here is the whole family, thankful to the bees for the candles, for the golden honey, for the cough syrup, for the beeswax, and for pollinating the flowers. Thank you, honeybees. The Boy Who Grew a Forest. The True Story of Jadav Paying. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. Proverb. In India, on a large river island, among farms and families, hard at work, there lived a boy who loved trees. Trees meant shade, food, and shelter for many. But each rainy season, Floodwaters swallowed more and more of the beautiful tree-covered land. The boy's precious island was shrinking, eroding away with the rushing river, leaving empty sandbars behind. The boy witnessed animals stranded on those sandbars, their homes destroyed. He feared that if animals withered without trees, people would too. The boy shared his fears with the village. The elders explained that the only way to help animals was to create new homes for them. They gifted the boy with 20 bamboo saplings. Alone, he canoed down the muddy river. He wished he could cover all the land with trees. But a large sandbar nearby was a place to start. 
the land was too barren for animals, the shores too sandy for leafy trees. Would bamboo grow? The boy hoped. Determined, he began to plant. One shaft, two, then three. Every day, he watered the saplings by hand, sweat trickling down his face and chest. He built a watering system to help and lugged heavy buckets from the river. His arms grew tired, his back sore. Still, each day he tended to the plants and, over time, the bamboo patch grew into a healthy thicket. The boy was proud of his work, but he worried it wouldn't be enough. To stop the swelling river or to provide shelter for animals. If he wanted more plants to grow, he would have to create a richer soil. The boy carried cow dung, earthworms, termites, and angry red ants that bit him on the journey to the new home. He brought seeds from neighboring villages over trails, through brush, down the river. Each day, he planted. As years passed and the boy grew, so did a forest. 10 acres, 20 acres, then 40. Wildlife returned for the first time in many years. Buffalo, one-horned rhinos and snakes, gibbons, migratory birds and elephants. The man's forest teemed with life and diversity. Not everyone was happy. Fear swept over the villages when tigers arrived. So the man planted more grasses to attract small animals that would keep the tigers happy in the forest. Elephants wandered into neighboring farms to feast on the crops. So the man planted more fruiting trees to help feed the hungry elephants. Some wanted to harvest the forest to build homes. But the man was there to plant anew. Others tried to hunt the animals for their horns and fur. But the man was there to protect. Few thought the forest would last, but the man believed in its strength. Now in India, on a large river island, among wildlife and trees as tall as buildings. There lives a man who has planted a forest. The forest is called Molai, after a man named Jadav Molai Paying. 
who never stopped planting and pruning and protecting. Only by growing plants, the earth will survive. Jadav Pai. The Digger and the Flower by Joseph Kiefler. It was morning and the big trucks were ready to work. Let's hoist, said Crane. Let's push, said Dooza. Let's dig, said Digger. Together, they built tall buildings for working. They built roads for driving and bridges for crossing. They built and built until the loud whistle blew. I'm beat, said Crane. Me too, said Dozer. The other big trucks took a break, but Digger did not. He had found something in the rubble. Hmm. Hello there, he said. The flower was tiny, but it was beautiful. Every day, while the other big trucks built, Digger visited the flower. He watered it when its leaves looked dry. Drink up. He shielded it on windy days. Before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flower a bedtime song. <laughs> the flower grew, but the city grew too. Soon, every space had been filled. Every space but one. We need to put a building here, said Crane. Dozer started his engine. Before Digger could stop him, ah, Dozer blew a big puff of smoke. And cut the flower down. Then the other big trucks went back to work. Oh, but Digger did not. Oh. 
When the smoke cleared, Digger saw something in the rubble. Hmm? Hmm. Little seeds, he said. He scooped them up and drove. Mm, mm, mm. He drove past the tall buildings, past the farthest house on the farthest street. He drove to a place no big truck had ever been. There, Digger stopped. He dug uh, 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 and scooped. seeds into the warm earth. Every day, Digger cared for the seeds. He watered them when their leaves looked dry. He shielded them on windy days. And just before he switched off for the night, Digger sang the flowers a bedtime song. Plant a Kiss Written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal Illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds It goes like this. Little Miss Planted a kiss. Planted a kiss? Planted a kiss. Sunshine. Water. Greet. Repeat. Wait and <sighs> wait. Getting late. Doubt. Pout. Sprout. <laughs> Shout! Shout! Yeah.
gather about. Wow! How? What now? Stare and stare. I'll share, she declared. Don't you dare! It's far too rare. I it'll go bare. She didn't care. From there, everywhere. To and fro. High and low. Rain or snow with a bow. Alas, time to go. So she returned. There she learned. From one little kiss. <gasps> Endless bliss. Willa and the Wind Willa was a whimsical girl, and Willa loved the wind. She longed to be like the leaves that fluttered by her window and floated through her long locks of hair. She loved the way they danced in the air like a beautiful ballet, and the sound of the loud whoosh from their perfectly harmonized whirls. But Willa's favorite thing about the leaves was the way they flew freely through the air wherever the wind wanted to take them. Willa wanted to be just like the leaves in the wind. Willa wanted to fly. First, she tied her favorite superhero cape around her neck, hiked to the top of a humongous grassy hill, and sprinted as fast as she could down the steep slope. But as quickly as she ran, her feet never left the ground. Next, she sat on a swing and pumped her legs so hard she almost flipped over the top of the swing set. Right when she was at the highest point, she leapt into the breeze. But the breeze didn't catch her and she hit the sand with a thud. Willa stayed hopeful because she saved her best idea for last. She collected every scrap of paper she could find and crafted a giant paper airplane. She glued and taped all of the edges together, creating the world's coziest cockpit. It was so stable, she just knew it would take her frolicking through the air. With her goggles on, ready for takeoff, she leapt, she jumped, but her airplane just wouldn't budge. Defeated, she came inside, ready to give up. All of her plans failed, and she was filled with disappointment. Her dad had one more idea. Come with me, he said. He took her outside and told her to climb up onto his shoulders. Stand up, he said. I'll hold your ankles. Bravely, Willa put her feet on her dad's shoulders. 
straightened her legs, and stretched her arms out to the side like big, beautiful wings. A gargantuan gust of wind came whipping through the air, and she finally felt like she was flying. Suddenly, the wind grew so powerful that Willa lost her balance. From high up in the air, she stumbled and came falling down fast. Closing her eyes, she waited to feel her body hit the ground. But instead, she landed softly in her dad's strong arms. She wrapped her hands around his neck and didn't let go. The protection of her dad's embrace made her feel even more free than the leaves. I guess I'm not like the wind, she said, but that's okay. The wind is inside of you, Willis dad said to her. You are free like the leaves and dance more beautifully than they ever will. The wind in your heart will take you anywhere in the world you want to go. You just need to be brave enough to jump. If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks brought to life. My favorite story on books is The Unicorn and Horace because the horse feels like he's, well, not beautiful, but he actually is. I'm going to explore more on books, and you should too. Don't wait around. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.